Hey guys, welcome to today's lesson. We are finally looking at the spherical geometry, which of course is part of the HSC General 2 course. For the most part, this is going to be new, although we'll be using um, other aspects that we've done previously of mathematics and particularly measurement. So what is spherical geometry about? Well, hopefully you can see on the right hand side, there is a big picture there of the globe of Earth. Um, and I guess this is about some applied questions, um, measurement questions, of course. So applied measurement questions to do with the Earth. So what will we be looking at? Well, um, first of all, we'll be looking at, I guess, coordinates um, or locations um, of different points on the globe. We'll be looking at the distance from one point to another. We'll be also looking at time differences. Um, not so much time zones, um, however, we'll kind of see how they work. Um, this lesson, guys, will be pretty much just introducing what uh, spherical geometry is about, um, and we'll be looking at coordinates this, this lesson. The main thing I want you to get out of today is by looking at the two words on the right-hand side. Actually, they're not there, which that's okay. Um, the first will be longitude, and you might remember back to your geography lessons, and latitude, which again, you might remember back um, to your geography lessons. So lines of longitude. What are long lines of longitude? Well, they are also called lines of meridian. And you might think, oh, meridian, I've heard that word before. Have you heard of the word, um, maybe you heard a word GMT, which is the Greenwich Meridian, okay, which I'll talk about in a moment. But Lines of longitude are these, I might do it in red because it's in red, are these lines here that are the vertical lines. Okay, so those vertical lines are lines of longitude. Now, you can see we've got that sort of uh, that angle there of zero degrees or that coordinate, and the two red lines there kind of look like a... Uh, a I guess a uh, Cartesian plane, if you will, and we used to call that the point of origin. Now, I just mentioned GMT or Greenwich Meridian Time, and Greenwich Meridian Time, hopefully you know that Greenwich is a location which is in um, East London, and that is pretty much where we start counting time from. We call that zero degrees. Now, that big lo uh, long line there, long line, is the longitude line, which we refer to as the prime meridian. That's where we start at zero degrees. And the other longitude lines will either be east of the prime meridian, so east of Greenwich, or they'll be west of Greenwich. And you can see west of it, it's 20 degrees, and what they often would write would be 20 degrees west or 20 degrees east. So these longitude lines, these are our east or west lines. Our latitude lines are there in blue. I'm just going to change my color to blue. And you can see the big latitude line there is what we refer to as the equator. Um, latitude goes from uh, or goes around the globe left to right kind of so you can see here that the blue line the latitude lines as you go up I might do a, a darker color blue that might be better um, as you can see here on that those lines my latitude lines get smaller and smaller and smaller as they go up now I've just used that word up which we would also use the word to represent that called north. So my latitudes that are above my equator, or that zero degrees line for my equator, are north, and those that are below it, like that one there, are south. So we call our latitude lines, I have to color my blue, my chain my blue again, my latitude lines, they run north or south. Okay, and often people think, I oh, know longitudes north and south because they go up all the way up to north and all the way down to south. But that's not the case. Our longitude lines are either left or right of the um, prime meridian. 
and our latitude lines are the ones that go around like that. They're either north or south. And that can get a little bit confusing. Again, we start at that zero degrees, and you'll see I'll, I'll kind of go back to that each time um, because that's quite important having that starting point. And the other thing to notice that uh, when we are writing coordinates, and you'll see this in a few questions later on, we often do the, uh, the, the north or south version first. So for example, if I said um, 20 degrees north, and then let's say 60 degrees east, what I'm referring to is from here, I'm going to go north 20 degrees. So that's on this line here. So this is the 20 degree north latitude line. And then I'm going to go to the 60 degree east, which is, happens to be this location here. And that would be my location, my coordinate. But we'll get more into that in a moment. So just re uh, so recapping, our lines of latitude measures the angular distance north and south of my equator. Let's say, for example, that's the center of my Earth. Okay, and let's say that so I'm just going to do a line straight out to the equator. That 45 degrees north latitude line, if I draw a line up to it, which of course we recognize that would be a radius, what that 45 degrees actually is, is the angle from the equator up to that line up there. If I looked at the line down to 45 degrees south, such as that bit there, my 45 degrees is from the equator line down to that 45 south. So that's where they get that 45 degrees north from and 45 degrees south from. Likewise, if I'm looking at my longitude lines, the same thing sort of works. We've got my uh, my prime meridian there in red, and you can see it's use that word again, the Greenwich meridian, which is it's more probably commonly known. If I kind of draw a little, uh, okay, I'm going to use the purple there, like a, a center a bit center in there. Now if I draw my radius, that's my zero line. Let's say if, for example I take my west point which is here and I draw a line to it. The angle between the Greenwich Meridian and that 20 degrees west line, that's 20 degrees. That's why that that longitude line is called the 20 degrees west because measured from that starting point that's 20 degrees to the west. Okay, so again, that's just giving you a bit of an idea. Uh, remember, longitude are our vertical lines, and they are either east or west of, um, we'll call it the Greenwich Meridian. And if I look at my latitude lines, they run horizontal around the world, and they are either north or south of the equator, which is obviously that, that line there. So hopefully that gives you a little bit of an understanding about latitude and longitude, okay? So what are some of the things that we'll be looking at? We've already looked at the angle differences. Let's call this, I'm going to do this in purple. Let's call that my, that's my equator line, so zero degrees. And in brackets, I'm going to call that my equator. I'm going to call that line there my prime meridian or my Greenwich meridian. Meridian, which means that that little light that there is our zero degrees. Let's say, for example, that the other line we've got running up here, which is this one here, that might be the 60 degrees east longitude line. Okay, and that means once again that from zero to that line there, that that would be 60 degrees sitting inside there. And what you might be able to start to see, and we'll be doing this more next lesson, is it creates, when I look at that and I look inside the sphere, a sector. And on that sector, we'll be looking at things such as the distance from A to B. And hopefully you might remember that the uh, formula for the length of a sector is theta over 360 times 2 pi r. And within spherical geometry, the radius of the Earth will always be given as 6,400 kilometers unless otherwise told. Um, so it's pretty easy most of the time as long as you know what that angle is going to be um, inside there. 
okay? Then you can just tuck it in where the theta is and you can find your arc lengths. Um, pretty much that's that's like the hard part, I guess. Um, certainly, it gets a little bit trickier than that, but that's, that's sort of the idea. The other thing I didn't know, uh, I didn't mention, I might just come back to it, um, and that's the word or the term great circles. I should have mentioned that. Now, what a great circle is, a great circle uh, runs from one polar to the other polar and it goes all the way around. So my lines of longitude are all great circles. They're all great circles as you can see here. And I just realized I went forwards instead of backwards. I want to use that question in a moment. But it still doesn't take away from the fact that that long line there, that is a a, a, latitude, sorry, a longitude line. So all my longitude lines there, they are all what we refer to as great circles because they go all the way around. As you can see though, in terms of my latitude lines, the only great circle goes, that goes around the center or from one pole to the other is going to be my equator. That's the only great circle. These are much smaller circles, which means the radius becomes smaller than what's in, in the sort of center. Okay, But again, that's just if you see the word great circle. So what are we going to do today to finish this off for the last couple of minutes? We're just going to look at some location questions. So a diagram of Earth's surface is shown below. The coordinates of point A, which is, as you can see there, is 60 degrees north and 70 degrees east. What are the coordinates of point B? You've noticed that that red line there is going to be my line uh, or my longitude line um, of the prime meridian. And we've got the equator line drawn in blue there, which means that that point there is my zero degrees line. Okay, that's my point of origin. Point of origin. Apologies for that. That short term. Um, okay, so how do we do the first one? Well, point B, you can see, doesn't go, or so it goes up to B. Now, I think that's the center of my circle. Okay, it goes up to that line there. That has the same north coordinate because it's north of the equator as A, which means that it's going to have for A the first coordinate of 60 degrees north. So again, I must go north-south first, which means that that's 60 degrees inside there. And you can see that it's sitting on our Greenwich Meridian or our Prime Meridian. So it doesn't go left or right. So it's just 60 degrees north, zero degrees. If I look for the next question, we're going to do for B, what are the coordinates of the point C? Well, in this case, if I start at my point of origin, we don't go up or down. So we don't go north or south. So it's zero degrees. However, I'm going to the east. So at least I know it's east. And that's sitting on the same long line of longitude as A, which means it's going to have the same east bearing as A. And the last one, C, says what is the maximum value possible for latitude and where does it occur? Well, thinking about it, this is zero degrees. It's going to go from up here all the way at the top there, what's going to be the maximum it can possibly be? And hopefully you can see by doing that, it's kind of created a right angle, hasn't it? Which means it's going to have a maximum value of 90 degrees north or 90 degrees south. Otherwise, it goes over 180 and it's just on the other side. Um, that's on my latitude. And where does it occur? It's either the North Pole or the South pole. Okay, last little questions. I'm mindful it's only 15 minutes long. I want to stop at that point. The diagram of Earth's surface is shown uh, opposite. What is the latitude and longitude of point A? Again, the first thing I'm going to look at is where my zero, zero line is. We've got my Greenwich Meridian here and my equator here. So that's my point of origin. So that's zero degrees, zero degrees. So A, you can see, is on this blue line, which has the, the longitude line of 30 degrees east, it doesn't go north or south, so it's zero degrees, zero degrees north or south, and it's 30 degrees east. Part B, what is the latitude and longitude of point B? Well, I'm going up to this latitude line, which is 50 degrees north, 
so 50 degrees north, but it's sitting on the Greenwich Meridian, which is zero degrees east or west. C, what are the coordinates of a point 60 degrees due south of point A? Well, due south of point A will be sitting on this line um, of latitude and longitude, which would mean that it's going to be 60 degrees south, because A was on the equator, and it's going to be on the same line of longitude, which is 30 degrees east. And the last one, what are the coordinates of a point 10 degrees due east of point B? Okay, well, point B is up here. Now, that is zero degrees. So due east, it's going to be still on the same uh, latitude line of 50 degrees north, which is fine. But now it's going to go east 10 degrees, so it's 10 degrees east. Alrighty, look guys, I hope that was a bit of an introduction about the coordinates and what longitude, latitude and those types of things are going to be for your spherical geometry. Make sure you watch the next lesson. We're going to be going into more detail about finding the distance of an arc length or the, uh, the shortest distance on a great circle. So yeah, let me know if there's any problems or if anything was unclear. Have an awesome day guys.